Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're continuing our series with Reset Blades. And when it comes down to power tool accessories, general consensus is accepted the fact that there is one brand that sticks out better than everyone else. And what brand is that? That is the Diablo brand from Freud, all right? So general consensus says, you ask anybody who makes the best accessories for power tool cutting accessories at least, and most people will point to Diablo, okay? There may be some, you know, people out there that may point out another brand here and there, but general consensus popularity, let's call it Diablo, all right? So, uh, continuing on this series, we're gonna test two of the recent blades today, the bimetal and the carbide uh, teeth demo demons, right? So the uh, they're designed for wood with nails, kind of the same blades that we've testing so far in this series, and we're here to find out, is the truth real? So you don't wanna miss this, stick with us. So this right here is a nine inch bi-metal reset blade for nail embedded wood, metal, and plastic. This is Diablo's reciprocating saw blade, which is specifically designed for maximum performance in general purpose, nail embedded wood, metal, and uh, applications. Uh, these high performance blades feature a bi-metal technology that delivers up to five times longer life than the standard blades on the market. Diablo's patented variable tooth design provides faster cuts with less vibration. This blade features a perma shield coating that protects the blade from heat, gumming, and corrosion, has a one inch demolition body for straighter cuts with less vibration. It has an ultra hardened cutting edge for up to five times longer life than standard blades. It has a one of a kind tip design that enables faster and easier plunging. This blade features an eight to 14 variable TPI. And this blade you can buy in all packs of you know configurations, promos, and stuff like that but on average, this blade will cost about $5. This is the nine inch carbide tipped reciprocating saw blade for nail embedded wood. This is the next generation of Diablo's Demo Demon carbide tipped reciprocating saw blade with variable tooth design, which is specifically designed for maximum performance in nail embedded wood. This high performance carbide tipped blade delivers unmatched 50 times longer cutting life than a bi-metal blade in nail embedded wood. It features the new variable tooth design that provides faster cuts with less vibration in nail embedded wood. High performance carbide for greater durability and cutting performance. Enhanced carbide tip blade connection for extreme impact resistance. Unique plunge tip to enable faster cutting and plunging. One inch oversized blade uh, that allows you for faster and straighter cuts with less vibration. It has the five to seven variable TPI and you can buy this blade individually or in packs or in other combination sets, and it will come roughly around $10 per a blade. All right, so let's take a closer look at some of these blades starting with the bimetal blade. So this right here is the bimetal uh, wood with nails general purpose demo blade. This is an eight to 14 TPI. Uh, this is a nine inch blade, as I say here, general purpose. This is designed for nail embedded wood and metal from 1 8 to 3 8 of an inch and also plastic. As you can see right here, a uh, lot of the, the teeth right here are much closer together and as it uh, gets further out into the deeper parts of the blade right here, you'll see that the gussets and the size of the teeth actually become bigger, right? So take a look at these teeth right here versus the teeth right here, which are really, really small and short right together. So if you are gonna be cutting metal, obviously it's probably better to cut the metal closer to this end of the blade. But if you're gonna be cutting a lot of, let's just say wood or soft material, better to use this part of the blade since the teeth here are much more spaced out, all right? Um, on the back side of this blade, it will say, uh, this is Swiss made. Has a little bit of more info up here. It's got you know skews and stuff like that down here. But other than that, this is the traditional Diablo blade with the traditional Diablo uh, red nonstick coating. Moving on to <clears throat> this uh, carbide tipped blade. So this right here is a carbide tipped demo demon, five to seven TPI. This is also the nine inch version. Uh, this is designed for wood with nails, and this is carbide teeth. Okay. So as it says right here, five to seven TPI. And then you can see right here, these teeth right here are much closer together, right? Than the teeth out here. So the teeth out here are a lot more spaced out. Uh, so if you are cutting softer material, you definitely want to be cutting more out here because it will help cuts away some of that stuff faster. But back here are much closer together. It even 
kind of looks like this design here kind of shows how much spacing is between the teeth right here it's really short and thin the teeth are really you know closer together as it fans out and gets bigger uh, it does get a little bit bigger okay uh, moving on to this back side this one will say made in USA which is different than Swiss made because this one right here will say Swiss made uh, this one right here says right about a hundred strokes per minute max uh, this one the carbide tip one will also say max 100 strokes per minute so and that's interesting mainly because you don't see too many uh sawzall blades that tell you the strokes per minute they're designed for okay so uh you know how much of a difference will this make in the performance let's go find out
All right, so let's go take a look at the damage done to some of this blade. So this right here is a bimetal blade, as you can see right here. The teeth that are closer together didn't really get used, even though it was right up on the edge of the material. This is just uh, the way that that saws all works. Um, if you look right here, some of these teeth right here, the sharpness has rounded off. And as you fan more out this way, you'll see some of the parts that didn't contact as much of the wood uh, or the, the hard screws is perfectly fine. But as it does contact the hard screws like this tooth here, you'll see has rounded off pretty well. And as you go on, you know, parts that didn't uh, was heavily touching the screws are perfectly fine. And this is pretty much what the teeth should look like. As you can see, pretty much the, the coating has worn off. And if you look at the back, it will probably be the same story. Uh, the edges or, or the teeth that are closer right here. Uh, uh, the shorter teeth are, are a lot better. And then as the teeth get more and more spaced out, you see there's a lot more damage happening to this tooth right here, which is rounded off quite a bit. Uh, as it contacted those hard uh, metal screws, okay? So coating on this side, same story. If you want to look at what it kind of looks like this way, you know, there's a little bit to look at, but not too much to change. Uh, if you want to stack or overlay or underlay, depending on which way you want to look at it, uh, you could see the teeth are supposed to look sharp uh, right about there, but you're seeing a lot of the sharpness teeth on the teeth rounded off, okay? So uh, that's the damage done by some drywall screws, a little bit of the nails, but nails usually didn't hurt it too much as you saw earlier in the picture, okay? <clears throat> Moving on to the carbide teeth. So this carbide teeth right here, as you can see, uh, the parts that are closer together have done fairly well, mainly because, you know, uh, because they're so close, they don't get that much uh, damage as, as each tooth impacts the surface. As you move further out here, you'll see uh, as the gussets and the space between teeth get bigger, more damage there is to the teeth, right? Because there is more impact force per tooth. So if you look right here, this carbide tip has sheared off. It's completely rounded off. This one here is mostly rounded off and this one here is completely gone. Uh, so this part is pretty good, damaged, pretty good. Obviously this part here is new, okay? So this tooth or this saw blade kind of has really tight teeth here, really big spaced out teeth here. So you would see most of the damage on the teeth right here, okay? If you look at the back side of the blade, it's gonna be pretty much the exact same story. All of the teeth here are in pretty good condition close to the blade where the teeth are really close together. As the teeth are a lot more spaced out, you'll see there's a lot more damage done to these teeth that have been rounded off, okay? Uh, if you wanna look at the underlay or overlay of the two blades right here, as what it's supposed to look like, you'll see the teeth that are supposed to uh, be really sharp the carbide tips have worn off. Uh, it will probably still cut and it'll continue to probably still cut. It just won't do as well. It'll probably just continue to rip, right? So uh, you could probably get a lot more life out of this blade just by cutting or using a part of the blade that uh, hasn't been damaged as much. But as you can see right here, you can see probably the best picture of the teeth being sheared off right there. Damage uh, getting worn out. But you know, these teeth right here, all good condition. These teeth right here, broken, okay? If, if this design of the teeth, like this uh, TPI, uh, the spacing of the teeth were pretty, pr pretty much close up here, I would guarantee you this blade would have done a lot better in terms of longevity, but the time per cut uh, would have suffered mainly because the teeth are too close together and you can't remove material that fast, all right? So this is uh, carbide teeth uh, for wood with nails. And that's what it performed like. So let's go take a look at the numbers. I hope y'all caught this number because some of those numbers went by fast. So let's go take a recap. And in case you just started watching this video in the series, just to remind you, we do all tests the same way, same saw, same user pressure, same all that stuff, okay? So with that in mind, let's go start with the bimetal blade, all right? So first with the bimetal uh, eight to 14 TPI variable blade, it ran all three uh, sets, all three runs on the 16D framing nails, cut all 36 nails. The average of three runs was 25.8 zero seconds then moving on to drywall screws told a little bit different story so we ran it and on the first run it cut seven screws and then it failed so uh you know total number of fasteners that was cut was seven plus 36 which is 43 fasteners all right so uh we then moved on to the carbide blade right and that will tell a different story. So let's go take a look. So uh, on the 16D framing nails, we ran all three runs perfectly fine. No issue, average of three runs was 27.87 seconds. Then uh, we ran to drywall screws. So 
And the first one on the drywall screws, the first one uh, was 28.63, second one was 29.47, and then on the third one was 30.65. It cut all 36 drywall screws, no problem. The average of the three runs was 31.19 seconds, okay? So, after we did all of this stuff, uh, we looked at the blade and we said, huh, this blade actually looks still like it's really good. It'll probably continue to cut more. So, we did exactly that. And uh, we cut additional seven runs of the drywall screws, which 10 runs total. We'll throw the numbers up here later. Uh, you can probably see them. But as you can see, it starts from run four, 33.12, and then progresses more and more slower down to run 10, which ended at 63.33 seconds, okay? So seven additional runs. It was cut about 120 uh, drywall fasteners uh, in you know those 10 runs. So what do the numbers say, and how does it stack up on the leaderboard? Let's go take a look. So if you could take a look at the leaderboard, uh, the Diablo Demon, the bi-metal 8 to 14 TPI blade had a total of 43 fasteners cut. So that puts it, bam, right below the uh, DeWalt Elite Series Carbide, uh, which, you know, is the lowest of the carbide blades, but then at the highest right above the uh, Milwaukee Axe bi-metal, which had a total fasteners of 41 fasteners cut, right? Um, but the Diablo had 43. So bam, top of the bimetal blades, but not yet to the performance of the carbides, all right? So the carbide blade, Diablo Demon, let's go take a look. It cut a uh, 36 plus 36, right? Plus a seven addition run. So it's 156 plus fasteners that were cut, um, which puts it in tied for first place with the Milwaukee Wrecker Blade, okay? So the Milwaukee Wrecker Blade also had 156 fasteners cut, um, but we're gonna put the Diablo just, you know, in tied, but just a little bit ahead of that, mainly because uh, the seven additional runs that the Milwaukee Wrecker uh, took uh, the time to get those runs in was about 427 seconds, but the Diablo Demon Carbide 7 edition runs took 350 uh, seconds, which is a lot of seconds less than the record, okay? So they're both tied first place, but if you're going to probably average out the runs or, you know, let's say estimate as it goes to, like to infinity, the Diablo Demon was cutting faster longer, okay? So therefore, it's tied in first place for the record, but it's just a little bit ahead of that, all right? All right. <clears throat> So what can we say about this, these blades, all right? So obviously, you know, Diablo is known for having, making some of the best cutting accessories on the market, period, right? I mean, that's generally what's accepted. And have they delivered on that promise or on that marketing? In this case, it looks like they have, you know, all the marketings of, you know, 50 times more, 100 times more. Yeah, we're probably gonna have to figure out what everybody's comparing this stuff to, but in terms of all the blades that we've tested so far, Diablo has delivered in terms of performance, okay? Not only that, the Diablo Demo Demon costs roughly about $10, or at least the carbide version costs about $10, and it's still currently performing better than the Milwaukee Wrecker, to be fair, which is the multi-material blade, which costs roughly around $13 a blade, okay? So, to answer the question, would I go and buy, buy these blades again? Uh, if I was buying, for whatever reason, a bimetal blade, yes, I would definitely go buy that again. But if I had to go buy a blade, I would definitely go buy the Diablo Demo Demon Carbide Blade, like most people on the market currently know, right? But now we actually have the data to back that up, all right? So, for 10 bucks, you can get yourself a really good blade, cut all day. You could probably cut, you know, a long, lot more fasteners. If you extrapolate some of the data out, you could probably cut, you know, let's say 20 runs or so before you start really need to change the blade out. But, you know, if you're one of those people who like, make sure you always use a sharp blade so you don't injure yourself, then you're probably gonna get less runs out of it. But the point is, if you're gonna go buy a blade, go buy this blade. Uh, and no, Diablo did not sponsor this video, or Freud did not sponsor this video. Nobody paid us to do this. We did go buy it for our own monies. So, hope this video's helped you guys out. But before we close, I do wanna touch base on one thing, okay? So, if you go take a close, very good look uh, at the uh, Diablo Demon, uh, Demo Demon Carbide Teeth. It's got a really interesting design, okay? We'll throw out the overlay. So <clears throat> on the early parts, the beginning parts of the teeth, it's kind of got the best of both worlds that kind of look like the Milwaukee Wrecker blade where the teeth are really closer together. Even the shape of the teeth are very similar, right? But as you go further out from the tang or from where it connects to the knuckle, uh, the teeth get further apart. And that part that gets further apart actually resemble the 
the teeth design of the axe, okay? So the, the far end of the teeth look like you got the axe blade and then closer into the teeth, um, you look like you kind of got the Milwaukee Wrecker teeth design. And I'm not even just talking about the spacing or TPI, I'm talking about the actual shape of the teeth, right? So in a way, you kind of got the best of both worlds in terms of the axe and the Wrecker in this one blade, whether or not you know they, cop or they, you know, they copied each other, I have no idea. Uh, this is just something that we noticed as a user, but you know, if you are cutting, let's just say soft wood and not uh, planning on running into tough materials, if you just manipulate the saw to be a little bit further out and use that uh, end of the blade that you'll probably get faster cuts, right? Um, if you're cutting, you know, more tougher material like screws or, or structural screws, let's just say, or even metal, you just want to cut closer to where the teeth are closer and you'll probably get better cuts. Okay. So that's something that we noticed. I did want to point that out. So anyways, hope that you helped you guys out. Uh, you know, like I said, we have numbers back it up. So uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, get back to work and we'll see you guys next time.